You speak as though I have conquered death. I live death every day. I am surrounded by it. Smothered by it. My wife, she's missing. I fear terribly for her safety. Some women are just looking for a reason to go missing. She disappeared into the Ahedar Desert, the heart of the Whispering Waste. The suicides go, it has an exotic appeal. I fear she has returned to my former mansion. If you would track her, find her, bring her home, you'd pay me in sad looks and liquor. The mansion was never reclaimed by the tax collectors. Dark rumors swirl amid the whispering winds. Landly my efforts marooned amid the dunes and cataclysms past. If my vault is untouched, its entire contents, the wealth of five noble generations, are yours. You had your openers and closers reversed. I should warn you, Sir Thief, or Nachtin, the boards call it. The dead citadel. Worse still, the whispering wastes do not lie empty. Rumors swirl of a figure stooped and shrouded in grey, face hidden, dragging a silver blade at his side, carving his way to the criminal element of two entire countries. None have divined its purpose, and it is only ever spoken one word, one most would not even recognize as a name. Bud. I don't know what I'd do without him. But there's some things we should keep locked away. Not the imaginary friends, but the imaginary fiends. Krim, where are you?
No sparrow. Does this word not sound like the death bird culling the living dead at dawn? It is the name both ghouls and demons dare not say, for they know it means death for the undead. <laughs> What is up, everybody? How are you doing? Hopefully you can hear me okay. Welcome to Shanth and Jetty Art and the Speakeasy Inspiration Preserve. It has been a minute. My God. I have been working on uh, scanning pages in, tightening up detail, all of that stuff for the last week. I've barely slept in, in a good way because it's been productive. So I wanted to share some of that stuff with you guys. I hope everybody had a wonderful Easter. Right out of the gates, a super chat. Let me say hello, hello. Uh, to uh, Timmy Mello here, and then I'm going to get to the hellos to everybody. Uh, Timmy Mello, Super Chat, uh, thank you so much. Happy Easter, Shop. Hope it was a good one. It was a good one. Thank you so much. I hope it was a wonderful Easter for all of you who uh, celebrate Easter, and I hope it was a wonderful Easter, uh, especially for you, Timmy Mello, with that kind message. Uh, we've got American Comics Company in the house. You're always in good company when American company Comics Company is in the house. God, that's how tired I am. Tammy A, what is up? I know you're unpacking. Uh, good luck with that. Moving is a chore. It's great to see you. Channel member, Tammy A, thank you for being here. And of course, because we've got this super chat here, I have to honor it with a cheerleader. So here you go, Timmy Mello. Thank you, my friend. And we're going to get to all things Nosferu very, very soon. Uh, Tammy's saying hello. We've got Sheeple Hunter in the house. Sheeple Hunter, it is great to see you. Uh, let's see who else we've got here. We've got Scottsley. What's up, everyone? What's up with you, Scottsley? I hope you're well. Everything is good with me. Uh, and, uh, yeah, man, it's great to see you. Let's see who else. We've got channel member General Piggy in the house. Hail channel member General Piggy. It is great to see you while they sleep, we work. Amen. That has been very true this week. Um, let me see here. Yes, and channel member Timmy Mello, outwork everyone. Hail General Piggy. Yeah, we're gonna talk about... Oh my god, the work that's involved in this stuff, which I know you guys know, but I always like to share it with you. Um, Blackjack, hail CG, hail CG indeed, and hail to you, Blackjack. It's great to see you, my friend. So, yes, indeed, let us talk. Let us talk about all things art. I thought about doing another one of those, um, another one of those, all the pages laid out on the floor, now that I've got all the pages. Um, and, uh, I still may do that. I still may do that. I was thinking about doing that for my next, uh, campaign update, but we'll see. Um, you know, cause I obviously don't want to show the entire book, even though they would be small, but I wanted to show you some of the things I've been working on, show you a couple of, um, detailing projects, you know, pages I've been doing. What I've been doing is I've been scanning the pages in and as I write and I letter into them, I just go, maybe there could be a little bit more detail there. Maybe that'll help with the flow of the page. And so this is an example of a page that underwent a ton, a ton of different changes this week, uh, mainly to make it more um, readable and more of what I needed it to be. And, uh, you know, and to have a little bit of an Easter egg for people who have been watching this whole process um, to know what's uh, what's going on there. So I've been doing detailing, adding in bats and then just fixing up compositions. I've got a little Easter egg uh, right there for people who uh, who know their pop culture. I'm sure some of you guys will recognize that. But all of this stuff, as it comes together, all of it is designed around one thing, which is to make this the best book that it can be and to make it into something great. And to be here at the tail end of it, I alternate between uh, uh, the euphoria of finishing the thing and then also the... Um, 
oh my god. So let's let's back up a little bit. Um, so my family is on vacation this week. It is wonderful. It is great to have everybody here in the house. It's great to see all of you guys in the chat. And um, and it's an amazing thing. But I have not had, and I'm not, this is not a complaint. I don't typically take vacations that often, but I have not taken a break from this job since October 2021. And it has been promoting, it has been YouTubing, it has been doing all of this stuff to build it to what it is. And the amount of, of work that goes on in terms of the painting and the telling of the story and all of that stuff, it's, it's so massive, it's so difficult to explain, and I am just so grateful that you guys have been in here supporting the project and supporting the book, picking up new members, um, and all of that stuff. I cannot overstate what that means because this is a pretty, you know, it's a pretty intense focus thing when you're doing everything on a project like this. And that's to say that there is no, um, there's nobody who's tagging in to do some of the work uh, until, of course, we get to the lettering phase. Thank God for that. Um, but it's all got to be done by me, whether it's the channel, whether it's all of this stuff. And um, it's it's a crazy kind of thing because as I look at what's going on in the world and I look at what's going on, you know, with people talking about, you know, oh, you know, like this stuff is insane you know, all of this stuff with the culture war and all of this stuff with, you know, people trying to basically, you know, um, step on anybody who has, um, wants to do something new, wants to do something different outside of that space. Um, it just makes it even more, you know, clear to me how important what this work is that those of us who are making projects and making books are. And just how it's so difficult to convey what it's like to create in a vacuum without all of those things behind you, you know? Hey, what is up? Ah, got inspired by Kelsey. Actually, let me say this right now. Kelsey Shannon, if you're out there, I'm going to say something to you right now. Kelsey actually um, guilted me into doing this. Not directly, but I turned on uh, YouTube and I've been just scanning and working all, you know, God, I have not stopped working on this thing. Um, it's been 24 hours a day cycling through the pages and looking at all this stuff. If I slip and show you a spoiler today, I apologize in advance uh, if I actually drop a page in front of the camera. I don't think it's going to happen, but you never know. And uh, I saw Kelsey streaming, and Kelsey's like, I don't like to stream. Uh, you know, I like to kind of hide out and not have to, you know, do this stuff. I live in my head. And I was laughing because I was thinking I had to go, I had to go deep inside myself to try to figure out what to do with this book. But I had to, uh, I had to just really go into this and I saw Kelsey and I was like, man, I got a stream. Um, I got to I got to fire up a stream and work. It's such a grind, you know, it's such a grind, but you got to do it. Um, I heard Linus, uh, Linus tech tips say they got rid of the LTT, uh, pre-roll into intro. I'm sorry, pre-roll intro because their analytics said the friction caused significant watcher drop off. Yes. Um, but I see 10 minutes of pre-rolls on live streams. Yes, that's true. Um, I, yeah, totally, totally see that. Sorry, Brandon, I don't know if I put that on screen, but thank you. Um, with the good and the bad, you all, um, you're always where God has envisioned you placing you absolutely right. Funny thing is, we don't realize we have already been on a path another, um, after the hundredth mile. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And that's really what it is, man. Um, yeah, <laughs> right? Do better than Kelsey. <laughs> it's pretty easy when talking, streaming. Yeah, I was watching him talk and paint, and I was thinking... Finally, another maniac attempting that. God bless him. Um, but you know, it's it's a funny thing, right? Because uh, you have to you have to uh, you know approach all of this stuff. Like there's there's all of the different phases of it. And when you launch a book, especially if you know it's a you're you know you're coming on the scene and you're introducing yourself to people, it is crazy. It's a marathon, and it's I, I get why. I mean. You know, it is what it is. I'm just, you know, maybe cut from a different cloth in that way. But um, in terms of um, why I want to do this per se, why I want to be in CG. Um, but I understand why people don't do it because it's a tremendous amount of work. And and it's, it's you got to be able to just kind of, it's like being in space alone. Like that Twilight Zone episode where the guy is, 
you know, uh, having this nightmare where there's nobody there, and it's because he's just been in an isolation chamber. That's kind of what it's like. Hey, Cranberry Langers channel member, Cranberry Langers, it is great to see you, my friend. Howdy to you. I hope you are doing well, my friend. And yeah, hail to the chat and howdy to all. So it's been a yeah. I hope everybody had a happy Easter. We had a great Easter. Um, I've been, like I said, I have been hip deep in Nosfero. I have been hip deep in all of this stuff, and working my brains out on this project and um it's looking great man it's i gotta say this the the having it all done in terms of of you know the pages and just doing this detailing phase uh, phase i can tell you that um the story everything has tightened up on this so much it's crazy um let's see here you do a lot of live paintings. I think that's good. I don't... Oh, oh, wait. What's going on? God dang it. Every time I try to... See, here's the thing about Ecamm. Every time I try to click on something, it's got, like, click on the thing to show it. Then it's, like, remove from broadcast. It's, like, all really small. It's, like, zero point type. Sorry. I'm going to try that one more time to read this. Um, you do a lot of live painting. I think that's good. I don't know if you're on a lot of other CG streams that... I'm just not seeing the publicity is important. Yes, I do. And I, I, I have done more, but I haven't been on as many as I have been in the past, if that makes sense. So, yeah, I mean, it's I sometimes uh, people will post links. If people invite me on streams, I'm always, always there. Um, but that's going to be that's going to be the next big push. You know, right now, it's just been it's been crazy. But, yeah, I mean, I'm always when people when people post a stream, if I'm not in the middle of this and I'm not working, I always hop on streams when I can. Yeah, it's it's really important. I haven't been doing as many as I used to do. Um, but uh, but that's that's saying something, because it's been crazy. I mean, I don't know when the last time I was on um, John Malin's stream was. I feel like it was like a couple of weeks ago or so. But yeah, it's it's just craziness. It's crazy to spin all these plates, y'all. You know that. Um, and also, also, something I've been thinking um, about a lot lately is I actually... This is an interesting thing I will quasi-share with you. Oh, let me see what's up with Timmy Mello here. Um, worked double duties, got double pay, and returned to working um, MLB. Very nice. Security Plus caught an online Easter service. Very nice. A banging Easter Sunday. Um, where you got to keep the, uh, yeah, Sunday, where you got to keep the hustle 24-7. You're absolutely right, Timmy. So um, I actually um, reached out to Michael uh, this past week. Michael Bancroft, for those of you guys who don't know. And, uh, which I'm assuming you all know. And, uh, I said to him, I was like, hey man, do you want to like, uh, hang out and just shoot the bull, you know, without us, <laughs> without a live audience? Cause you start to realize that all of the socializing you do is in public and on stream outside of, you know, family time and talking on the phone with, uh, my best friend here. And, um, and you just realize you don't talk to any fellow creators when there's not a live audience. Just to sort of be like, hey, how, what's up? You know, <laughs> how's the family? That kind of thing. And uh, it was a really great uh, phone call. We're going to try to do our uh, video call, I guess we'd say. We're going to try to do more of those every now and again. But yeah, man, everybody is running in a million different directions. I actually saw, um, God, was it yesterday? The days, can you tell I'm, I've been burning the, the candle at both ends? I caught, um, uh, stream by uh, one of my favorite YouTubers, uh, Valiant Renegade, I think it was his stream. I could be... No, it was uh, WDW Pro, maybe. Um, but uh, And uh, Mandy Summers was on there. I thought that was great to see her on there. But I think it's... I think it's great for us to kind of, you know, be putting ourselves out there in any way that we can and, and talking to different people. There's so many people in the horror space that I'd love to talk to about what they're doing, you know? Yeah, Lucent was a banger. Hail Bancroft and his hard work. Yeah, he is. He's doing it, man. I got to get back to work. All right, my friend Cranberry Langers, go crush it, man. I know you will. Um, but it's it's uh, it's great to see people kind of you know getting out there and and talking about what we're doing. And with regards to Nosferu, the thing about it that that I'm most excited is after all of this work and after all of the amazing support you guys have given me. Um, to finally be able to get the project out there is the thing I am most looking forward to because it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of holding on and, um, in terms of, of, you know, you're holding fast, dare I say, uh, when you're doing this kind of stuff, because there is so much work on it. 
there is so much stuff to to do but the rewarding part of it you start getting to the point where you're like again if, if you guys can imagine uh you just want the thing to be done but you want to make sure that you've dotted the i's and crossed all the t's and that's really all i'm doing right now like there was a there's a page i have that was the page i was working on doing some stuff on because i've scanned in most of the book now um but there was a page i was working on earlier uh today just before i did this one and this right here is an example of what I'm talking about. So on this page, there was, this was pretty open space um, behind No Sparrow. And I went in and I wanted to do, you know, some detailing and some things like that. But I really wanted to put in, sorry about the bad reflection there. I really wanted to put in some detailing in terms of a tree there, just because when I put the type over it, it, it feels better. You know, when I'm roughing in type, Eric is going to do whatever but if he wants to put tight places i have to think about that and it was the same thing with this panel a lot of you guys know it's an oldie but goodie um but this panel right here i started thinking about well what's eric gonna have to do when he has to letter this thing i need to put something behind her i can't just have the page end right there so i did this kind of interesting broken brick uh style right there and uh and it just it 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 dude it really tied the room together um, but it really brought the the page together because it needed it needed to have that it needed to have that extra little stopgap there in terms of of the pages, and so when I look at this kind of stuff and I'm you know you guys have all seen this stuff but when I'm looking at this kind of stuff, and you get to these these bigger moments in the story, <laughs> try not to show spoilers, but when you get to these bigger moments in the story, let's see if I can get the light to. I've blown this out with the gamma levels for that page, so it's going to be hard to show you all the detail in this. Um, but, uh, but when I get to these various moments on the book, it's, uh, it really is just about tightening them up, but it's, it's for all intents and purposes, it's done, um, except for the, um, except for the, the, you know, the scanning and stuff like that and the lettering and the scripting. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, it, this is the toughest part. This is like the, the finish because I've always, I mean, I'm not one of those people who's so precious with their work that I can't let go of the project. You know what I mean? It's it's not my bag. I, I have to get things done. Um, but I'm definitely... Um, I definitely want it to be something that looks good and is solid and, and worth the wait. But I mean, this book is... Guys, I know I say this all the time, but one outside of I appreciate you guys so much, the other thing I gotta say is is the book is beautiful, man. It is... It, it, doing a fully painted comic, you guys know, you've been here, is so complicated... And then doing, um, you know, the writing of that and the story of that. But it really is something that you, I think you're going to be proud to have, have, you know, backed and proud to have in your book collection. Because that's an important thing. You know, it's it's important to me that you guys get something you like. I just got um, another uh, Cyber Frog delivery. I haven't had a chance to look at this one yet because I know I backed that book a few times. Um, but I just got another delivery of that. I think I have three of those Cyber Frog PVCs now. Um, which is crazy, you know, it's crazy to see that stuff. And uh, it's just, it's cool to see what people do on the, you know, the bigger end of, of CG with their projects. It's awesome. And I love that stuff. I love seeing the book. I remember, uh, I remember back in that stuff, the villains and uh, the villains cover, I think is one I backed and the heroes cover because I just liked the way they looked. I think Ethan did some dynamite stuff on that. But how is everything in your neck of the woods, guys? Let me know how it is. What is up? It is Ellie Munoz, channel member Ellie Munoz. It is great to see you, my friend. I hope you're doing well, man. Yeah, and, and Randa McRanderson, if you're still in the chat, that is really good advice. I definitely um, I definitely will be getting out there more in terms of other people's streams. I mean, like I said, when whenever somebody gives me an invite, um, I will always pop on the stream. And uh, depending on if... Um, I mean, if I'm like... The problem with is it with this is that you guys have to watch the streams, and if, if I'm in the middle of painting and I'm just not conversant on the subject, sometimes I feel like if I sit there, it's just uh, it's ruining the experience for people. But that's just me. But you know, you guys are always great, so it's uh, it is one of those things. Oh my lord, here we go. And so. Let's see here. So for people who are curious um, about the lore on all of this stuff, this book, as I've often said, is 
a very high plot. So f within the pages, it's much more, it's like a pulp, but it's also much more like how comics used to be. Within this page count, um, it is really a lot of plot. I set up a lot of new characters and this whole world. So that's the thing I think that was a huge part of my process. I'm not, let, we'll see how this whole thing shakes out. Um, but let me see. Oh, Random McGranderson, sorry. Uh, I'm around just, oh, cool. Uh, just trying to paint some stuff myself. Excellent. Keep keep it up. And I end up getting gouache all over my fingers and try not to kill my keyboard. Brother, I've been there. Yes, indeed. Yeah, everybody's saying hello to Ellie Munoz. And thank you guys for dropping links to Nosfera, the Crypto Walker in the chat. I do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the thing for me is, is that um, I started thinking about when I'm telling these stories. One of the reasons why I'm telling the story the way I am and maybe this will be useful to some of you guys, or maybe, you know, it'll just be something that's like, oh, that's, I never thought of that before. But one of the things that I am doing with those Pharaoh is, because I know a painted, I you know, was pretty sure I knew um, that it would take a long time to do a painted comic book. I wanted to make sure that the story that you get in this resolves so that there's the next story, sort of like the how it usually goes with the new characters um, throughout comic book history, but the stories you get resolve but they also can build on each other. So you, I don't have to start from, where'd this guy come from? If you want to know that, that's in book one. Um, but the stories end. So you get a villain, you get a resolution, you put this stuff out there, and then it gets to the other side. And that has been that has been a huge part of my approach to it. Damn, that stone's looking good, guys. Oh, I'm happy with how it's coming out. Hey, happy Easter to you, Neon Todd Studios. How are you doing? It's great to see you, man. God damn it. Sorry, I'm blaspheming. I'm saying happy... <laughs> Forgive me, God. I know not what I do. Um, but happy Easter. Trying not to... Ah. So, the type is incredibly small in this interface. And uh, every time I go to click on it, it says, Do you want to add this person to the broadcast? Do you want to remove them from the broadcast? Do you want to ban this person? All this stuff. Every time I click on something, it's I almost hit something else. So, my apologies. But, um... <laughs> But happy Easter to you, Dion Todd. It is a pleasure seeing you. Yeah, I did a lot of um, Easter was good for me, guys. Yeah, I did a lot of, of um, a lot of introspection on this whole thing. Did a lot of uh, spent some great quality time with the family. We watched a lot of uh, the misses and I watched a lot of videos of uh, our kids when they were younger, and uh, it was it was wild. It's wild, you know. I mean, I I've been working on this thing so dang long. I don't even, like, I knew it was going to be a, a, you know, at the very least, one year of very hard work and building the YouTube channel and doing all of this stuff, but man almighty, I think one of the things I want to be able to do going forward once I wrap this up, and I know I won't, but I'm just saying it here so you guys can correct me on it, um, yes, I'm going to accidentally ban myself from my own broadcast, it's gonna happen, I'm not even kidding, Timmy Mello, you're so right, oh, hold on, <laughs> Um, Voyager 47, I just got cash grab in the mail. Oh my gosh, how is it, man? I gotta hear about that. Yeah, cash grab, Cecil's awesome. Cecil has brought me much joy, uh, and laughter. It's great to see you, Voyager 47. I hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, I'm busy, uh, delivering mail. Oh, excellent. Uh, thank you so much for what you do. Can't chat much, but love listening to your wise words. Thank you. Thank you, Ellie. I appreciate it, man. Um, but yeah, so, so one of the things I started thinking about is and I know you guys know it's it's I've got to get better at scheduling downtime because I can't um, I can't just work till I collapse forever and that's been one of the things that I've been I've been realizing and it's just you got so many you guys know if you've got family and you've got you know everybody's working everybody's got school everybody's got all this stuff going on it's it's a lot to balance out and when you're running your own business and you're responsible for promotion, you're responsible for all of this stuff. It is a lot. And so what I often think about, weirdly, I think that that helps me to shape how I approach making my art. Because I think about what I'm doing here as escapism and entertainment, right? As one should. And the thing I think about the most with it is, is that I want to make sure that when you guys get this, this book, it's escapism for you. It's not a, um, you know, you've got to wait for that next part 
you know, and all that sort of stuff. It's just, it's, it's one and done. You get something out of it. And then the next story will be one and done as well. And so it's weird how being busy and having so many, you know, plates to spin affects how I think about my work. You know, it, it really does because you start to, to value people's time, you know, and I appreciate you guys valuing my time. I know you guys know how much I'm putting into this thing. And uh, thank you for that. So let me see here. We've got, oh my gosh, let me see what we've got here. We've got Amanda B. in the house. Amanda B., it is great to see you. I tip my cap to you, my lady. I hope you are doing well. Um, let's see here. Yes, busy delivering mail. Um, you're uh, making entertainment, making things is hard work. You have to give yourself uh, as a creator time to recover. I know, gosh. Uh, yeah, you sound like all those great people who care about me, so thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm working on it, Random. Uh, that's one thing. Yeah, Cecil is a gem. Amen. A pretty dirty one but kind of warm, maybe more like a lump of coal. Yeah, I actually have to say this. I was watching, um, I think while I was working, again, the days are blurring together on me, guys. I was watching uh, Cecil on Ethan's channel with John and them, and it, it really did bring back a lot of fond memories of the early days of CG. And I found something, okay, here's a fun story for you. I found something either on Easter or the day before or so on Easter of, that was a part of my comics gate history and what it was was it was an index card with notes on it and if you guys can remember this there was a time when or there was a episode where ethan had guests or opened up the stream to people to come on after he debated some random person um who was you know just there to make life more miserable uh and uh and I went on there and I was, there's all these things I wanted to, to make sure I said, this is before I'd ever been on his channel. This was before Nosfero launched. So we're talking a while back and it was an index card of things I didn't want to forget to say when I got nervous and went on his stream. Think about that for a minute, how crazy that is. I mean, it's crazy. Hey, what's up, Dan Lawless? How you doing? Whoa, absolutely beautiful art. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate that so much, brother. From, from one artist to another, much respect, much love, man. Oh, gosh, I hit that dang thing again. See, I'm trying not to blaspheme or swear too much. Um, supplies question. Um, you thin down your acrylics like crazy. Why do you use heavy body instead of liquid acrylics um, and acrylic ink? Very good question, Skunk Artworks. So the reason why I do it is because um, it's when I water it down, it gives me more pigment. But it's... Um, how do I put this? Damn. It's... Um, you guys can tell I'm working on it. I'm really working. I'm going to try to be better. Um... <laughs> don't be sorry be better um i use heavy body acrylics and i water them down because of the pigment concentration is a little bit like gouache and i love um water as an agent more than i love medium as an agent because it starts to give everything that kind of plasticky sheen a little too much so i like to leave the traces of the pigment a little bit more so it behaves more like watercolor if that makes sense and less like glazes and oil so that's kind of why i use the heavy body because it, it reminds me of that and it allows me to get different effects. Um, and ultimately, because I'm somebody who, you know, use gouache, and I'm using gouache and uh, acrylic on some of these pages. Like this one started out as gouache, and uh, and now it's getting some detailing work and touch-up work with acrylic washes and acrylic opaque paints. Um, I use it because I just like the way that it behaves. So, for example, if I use soft body paints, I would add water to them and it would thin them out so much that it wouldn't be um, be good for glazing the way I do it. And what I'm trying to get happen, like in a tree like this, is and in a background like this, is to have the color break like that. You see how it's got that kind of watercolory, washy texture in certain places? That has been... Oh, I just need to hold it far, far away. That's... Or more far... Can you guys see how crazy things have been? <laughs> it's like I'm hanging on by a thread. Um... But, you know, whenever you're hanging on by a thread, there will always be somebody who can come along and throw a brick on your head. That's just the way it is. So for things like this, um, the thing for me is looking at getting... I'm going to move this way up. I'm going to do the Shant and Jetty zoom out. Actually, I should use the digital zoom. Oh, my gosh, channel member Admiral Wackass. It is great to see you, by the way. How are you doing? Um, but, yeah, I when I do this kind of stuff, I'm still trying to get it to, or not still trying to, I'm getting it to tie in more with the uh, the gouache work that I do, and I found this is the most effective way to do it. Um, 
Acrylic gouache is just acrylic formulated to be better with mixing with water. It's not gouache and will never be. Yes, it's um I've I've used tried using acrylic gouache and when people use it well, it's great. For me, I, I exactly with you. It's it's none of the, the pluses of gouache and none of the pluses of acrylics for me. And I'd rather work with one of those. Memory cards, uh, Kelsey and Cecil can learn a lot from you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's too funny. Uh, controversial statement. Uh, Cecil was funnier when he was fatter. Dang. All fat sense of humor uh, when they get thin and true Gary Kevin Smith. <laughs> I guess that is. But at least we'll have him longer. That's the main thing. Uh, let's see here. Everybody's saying hello, hello. Yo, yo, feeling good on sun uh, Sunday. Hope you're well, Shop. Yes, absolutely. And by the way, happy Easter to you, my friend. I hope you are doing well. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yep, American Cosmos Company. Everybody's saying hello, 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 hello. Yeah, man, I will tell you this. I am I am cruising to the finish on Nosfero. It feels great to have all of the pages. It feels great to have this stuff, you know, where I can actually see it and, and see how the stuff is coming together. But there's just these little things where it can be tilting a character's head, you know, and adding all of that stuff to it. But I did have uh, a pretty... I've had several pretty amazing pop culture experiences that have put fuel in my tank. Uh, not in terms of, of entertainment, but in terms of what's what's happening. I watched um, I watched with Glee the uh, shareholders... Disney shareholders meeting on Valiant Renegade's channel. Um, and I've watched the success of uh, Super Mario and the increasing success of Universal Studios theme parks. And I think uh, a day of reckoning is coming for people who have taken the, um, the fun out of entertainment increasingly. And, of course, I laughed and cried a little bit at the um, Star Wars Celebration announcements. So these are the things that happen. Um, it's a crazy, crazy thing. But, yeah, I mean, I want, like, oh, my God, that does look good. Sorry, I, I haven't seen this. <laughs> <laughs> it seems it's zoomed out. Guys, I'm hanging on by a thread. Hanging on by a thread. Um, yeah, holy cow. Yeah, here's the, here to sum up what I've been mumbling and rambling uh, since the start of the stream. D don't do this if uh, you're you're not ready to just work harder than you've ever worked before. And if you are, do this. It's so rewarding. It's difficult, but man, meeting folks like you guys and meeting people who want to back what you do. I want this to be the horror superhero. I get to do things with this character that they can't do in the mainstream or they can't do because of their cynicism. But as I was watching um, some Hammer Horror movies while I painted and I saw Peter Cushing expressing, you know, his 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 faith in, uh, in, in God and when he's fighting these vampires and everything like that. And I just thought, I get to do things like that. I get to do things that are spiritually uplifting, that aren't looking down their nose at anybody, and that is what is so fun about doing all of this stuff. Yes, indeed. Hey, General Piggy, indeed. Um, it's just gristle for the YouTube mill now. You're, you're absolutely right. It is. It is gristle for the YouTube mill. Um, but it's, it's, um, it's a crazy thing because you just sort of look at it and you go, wow, the, you know, how do I word it? I always knew I was going to get this thing done, and well, God willing, you know, I don't get hit by a bus or anything like that, but I always knew that, that this thing was going to come along, it was going to be great. I didn't know the support I was going to get, all of that stuff was so many, oh, so many leaps of faith. But, um, and I knew there would be BS, I mean, how could you expect to be in CG and not catch, you know, your share of, of insanity? But, um, but I didn't... I, I, I had to take so much of that stuff on faith, guys. So much of that stuff is taken on faith, as you can imagine. And my faith has really helped me through a lot of this stuff, I can tell you. And um, and when you do stuff like that, it, it doesn't just... It raises it raises your game, but it, it, elevates, it elevates you in a way as a person. When you take a risk, you take a leap of faith, you put yourself out there, and you stay true to your principles it really does have a good effect on you. And it's it's I'm so grateful that I've met the people I've met and that been able to do the things that I've I've been doing. And I'm always re examining, I'm always trying to figure out, all right, how do I you know, how can I be more effective at this? But some days, you know, as you guys know, it's it's all about the grind. 
it's all about the work and putting the stuff together. And that's why it's great every now and again to reach out to somebody like Michael and, you know, some of my friends, uh, you know, in the YouTube space and, of course, other people in CG. I mean, the last time, um, you know, like it, it could be something small, you know, like I, I messaged uh, John, I think it was a couple days ago. Again, the days are blending in together. Um, but I messaged John about they're releasing, for those of you guys who are big Travis Charest fans, they're releasing a, um, a Travis Charest, uh, uh larger edition of his uh, Meta Baron stuff that he did. Uh, I think it's this summer. And I sent it over to John Malin because I know he's a big Travis Charest fan. So little things like that are great. Yeah, no doubt. Star Wars is dead. I can't even bring myself to care. I don't either. It's It's dead as a doornail absolutely dead sorry like it's been for a while but i think a lot of people are waking up to that but i was out after season uh the gina carano stuff i was like done disney plus done with all that stuff and the reason was and they someone said it really eloquently uh recently which was they said i don't think they were aware that gina carano's character in that story was a load-bearing pillar and when they pulled her out the whole thing got you know weakened apex comics it's great to see you my friend how are you doing Terrific to see you. And I think that a lot of us realize that. And when it comes to Comicsgate, when it comes to CG, when it comes to doing all of this stuff, the most important thing... Sorry, I turned the brightness up on this in case wife or kids need me. Um, but one of the most important things that, that we have to remember is, is that every little bit that we do helps. It really does. I was thinking about that before I started the stream, Timmy Mello. I may have to embarrass you a little bit. But I, I, I saw, like, you know, as I was waiting to fire up the stream and and Timmy Mello <laughs> sent a super chat. I was like going, I don't th know if people know how much all of the stuff that you guys do helps. Being channel members, sending super chats, it all helps so much because we don't have some massive support system of some huge corporation behind this. What we've got is our hard work and our ability to take a beating in a lot of instances and we just, against all odds, we make culture against a massive machine. And people think about, you know, I always thought about things that I'd like to see or things that people wouldn't do. One of them was having a very honorable character in the um, style of Peter Cushing that is, you know, fighting evil and is a person of faith. And I can't imagine that happening in mainstream. Well, you guys are making it possible for that to happen here. You know, combining... A character who has faith with Lovecraftian mythos, all of that stuff is something the mainstream might be able to do one, possibly could do the other, although I've never seen them do it recently. But you're not going to see both together. That's what independence is about. It's about having an imagination, having some creativity. And, and it's so important. What is up, Comics Talk with Pops? It's good to see you, Pops. How are you doing, man? I haven't seen you in ages. I am uh, drowning slowly here. Um... Even before, <clears throat> even before the Gina Carano stuff for me, I thought Mandalorian was a terribly written show. There you go, from the start. I thought they were going to redo Lone Wolf and Cub. Agreed, yeah, in Star Wars, and we didn't even get that. Lone Wolf and Cub is awesome. Holy cow, jeez. A super chat from Tammy. Thank you, Tammy A, um, for your hard work, Sean. Oh my gosh, Tammy. Thank you. Thank you for your hard work that went into that super chat, by the way. I know you guys work hard for your money, and, and, and I appreciate you so much. This cheerleader is for you, Tammy A. One of my favorite people when we're here, when we're on the Double Impact streams, makes me laugh my head off. Thank you for being a channel member, and thank you for the super chat. Charge! Thank you so much, Tammy Yang, and thank you, Timmy, as well. Um, let me see here. God, I really need to get hooked on phonics. Um, you will, um, all you have, my glasses are falling down. All you have is the community you built with the fans and friends. It's a team effort to keep that foundation firm against the industrial machine, which takes what it wants. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And and this is the craziest thing about it, right? Is that um, you have to do comic book work for the just for the love of it. I mean, sorry, let me rephrase that. In Comicsgate, we are a capitalist group. We want to make money doing this. We're here to make money. We're here to make businesses. But what I mean to say is, is that um, you've got to put more into it than that on the creative end of things. Because um, if you try to create in a way that's just only about that, you're not going to put stuff in there. You're not going to put those quiet moments in there, or you're not going to put in those moments of beauty. And I do not know why I am so lucky to have you guys as... Oh, my wife hates that word, sorry. Fortunate. 
she hates the word luck. Well, I am so fortunate to have you guys as fans, but it's been 40-something years getting to the point to where little flourishes of the paint, little things like this, to have you guys appreciating that stuff means the world, and it's great. Um, oh my gosh, Phil's in the house. My brother Phil. Phil, it's great to see you. Uh, Phil, if you ever want to talk sometime, do a phone call, let me know, man. Um, Phil and I were texting back and forth on Easter. Thank you for the Easter wishes, Phil. Um, and, uh, and it's just, it's so nice. Like Phil even sent me a message on Twitter. He's like, Hey, is everything okay? <laughs> man, how are you doing? You know, just to see how you're doing, you've got people. And I just thought, uh, I'm not dead. I'm just in Rhode Island. Uh, let me see here. But, uh, yeah, luck is for people, um, who are not sure if they can do. You're absolutely right. Yeah. That's what she says to me, you know, cause we're, we're very thankful. I feel very thankful for my family. I feel very thankful for my health. I think very, feel very thankful for the opportunities I have being born in this country and the, the, um, the access to technology that makes all of this possible. Um, that was funny enough. If you want to know how lame and boring I am, that was one of the things I talked about with Michael. We said, isn't this a miracle that we get to just video talk to each other and we're on opposite sides of the planet? I mean, that stuff is never lost on me. You know, you can have friends all over the world and and you can talk to people and you can have people that you can count on who have your back. And yes, it does open you up to crazy people all over the world, but it, I just don't, I, I try not to ever focus on that stuff. My attitude has always been, you know, what do you, when you work hard and you do stuff, what do you expect? I watched um, an MMA fighter who you guys know. I, I, I can never pronounce his last name, Arasanya, is that how you pronounce it? Um, come back and defeat someone who beat him three times. And he said this really beautiful message, which I posted on Twitter, which was, you know, um, you got to, you know, how do I put it? It's, it's like that you want everybody to have that feeling of joy that comes from overcoming something and being kicked and getting back up and not quitting. It's a joy that, you know, you almost can't imagine. And my comic book journey, which started when I was maybe 11 or 12 sending out submissions, has been a very, very difficult and complicated one that I don't know if I'll ever fully be able to share with people. It was, it has been a lot of heartbreak and a lot of, of just difficulty and frustration and, you know, whatever else. And if... The fact that Nosfero has been the success that it's been, and I really do believe it will continue to grow, but the fact that this has happened is not because, it's certainly not for lack of caring, it's certainly not for lack of trying, it's not any of that stuff. This is a, a triumph over some really, really, you know, difficult things with, you know, doubt and, for, you know, just, God, any number of things. And to do this and to share this with you guys is big for me. Because you guys are, are a part of a victory that I will never be able to, I will never be able to fully explain, you know, I, I, and can, or I should say convey my, my, how big it is. And I'm so glad that you guys are here. Um, I didn't know you guys were going to be here. And, uh, when I started this journey and I am grateful every day that you guys are here. So again, that's, that's me for, that's enough cheesiness out of Shanth for the day, probably, but you guys know. If you're here, and certainly if you're a channel member, you know how obnoxious my cheesiness will be. It is what it is. I just, I try to look at everybody in the best light, and I try to keep things as positive as I can. And it's, um, it's not always easy. It doesn't mean I take, I mean, I do not put my blinders on, which I think is something, I just, I'm not capable of doing that. Um, I see stuff and I'm not wild about it, but it's, um, it is what it is. But I always, my attitude is, I'm going to always have my default setting be gratitude. I know we talk about that every stream. It's like a broken record, but I mean it. Uh, let's see here. Oh my gosh, we got some more folks in here I got to say hello to. Um, is that the gargoyle? Oh, <laughs> yeah, it is. She's, she's, what was it? What the hell was that? That was weird. Um, yes, I always put love into my comics work. Most of the time, I don't get paid. Yeah, it's, it's, it is what it is. Yeah, absolutely. Phil's saying, ha ha, yeah, nah, lucky son of a bitch, there you go. Lucky, yeah, exactly, that's right, that's right. Michael Deitch in the house. God bless you, Michael Deitch. There's a book, Mastery, that recounts people who went through, yes, many setbacks in various fields, and it all came together for them in uh, late in an unpredictable way for them to excel and succeed. Patience. Michael, you are so right. People talk about... 
you know, coming into this stream and hearing positivity and wisdom, I think a lot of that stuff that I see happening in the chat is that for me, man. And it's great. Um, Sean looked back at the beach and where he thought there was only one set of footprints. We were actually crowd surfing him. Let me tell you something. If I look, I never, I never doubt that. Like, you know, I never doubt that. And it's, the, that is the funniest thing. Yeah. In the, in, in the world. But I remember seeing that. I still remember there was a, a wonderful old couple who lived across the street when I was living uh, in Gross Point Woods near Gross Point Dank. My man, Dan Lawless. Um, and they were Tom and Beverly Sear. Shout out to them. Uh, Tom passed away. God, I don't know, maybe six or seven years ago. And I was a little kid and I was just, you know, wanted to be, you know, just I was wandering the neighborhood in Gross Point Woods, uh, just outside of Detroit as a kid. This is the way it was. And um, and there was this couple that were friends of my family who would let me come over and play with their Matchbox cars. And um, and I guess they could see I probably needed some attention uh, <laughs> from adults, maybe some supervision, too. And um, so I would go over to their house and play. And I remember that that was the they showed me that and it was the first time I'd ever seen it that footprints in the sand I think it was on some like wooden plaque or something like that in their house and um I just thought wow you know like it, as a kid I must have been I know I was younger than second grade at that point so I may have been in kindergarten or first grade but I remember seeing that and just finding it really beautiful you know and I've heard every comedic as you can imagine variation of that um and it's great but yeah, that always sticks in my mind. You know, you never know, you never know who's out there and who you're going to meet, who's going to become a really good friend and who's going to have your back and things like that. And and I try to always focus on that. You know, I always try to focus on that. Look at all the love in the chat here, guys. And Comicsgate is like that because I remember, you know, again, forgive me if I'm a little nostalgic, weirdly, about this stuff, but I remember when Ethan launched Cyberfrog and he was talking about how uh, as it started crushing. Uh, records how when he you know told andrea and he said to us in the the chat at the time that um you know he's gonna he's gonna fall back it's gonna be like a trust fall and he's just gonna trust and have faith that we were gonna catch him and i thought yeah i mean that is that's a, a powerful thing you know to hear somebody say and when i did this i guess i wasn't thinking in those terms at the time but man am i thinking in those terms now it, it really like i just went wow this because I, I think if i thought about it too much i'd have been um as terrified as you know as i should have been and uh i mean i was walking away from uh, a full-time job in academia that um you know did not pay great i will tell you that but it did not pay nothing and it was a it was a huge decision. It was 18 years of my life. And I went into this stuff and I was like, let's make it happen. Oh my gosh, Mighty Magic, it is great to see you, my friend. I feel like I saw you earlier and I missed you. I'm so sorry about that. Hail to you, Mighty Magic. Good man. Um, let me see here. Yeah, I love your avatar, Admiral. And I get no respect. No respect. No respect. Um, and, and I just, I mean, I was... I, that's... Okay, here's something that I'm sure a lot of you guys can can realize. Have you ever been in a situation where you did something on instinct and then you looked back and you were thought to yourself suddenly, I should have been far more terrified, and then you suddenly felt that terror? <laughs> you were like, oh my god! Like, I, I just realized how... Sorry, I gotta adjust the mic there. Uh, I realized how absolutely insane that was. I'm having that right now as I wrap up No Sparrow. I look at the cover, I look at the... Um, you know, the interior stuff I'm doing and I'm thinking, oh my God, that could have been, that was terrifying. All of it, every bit of it was a massive leap of faith. And that, I don't know if any of you guys have had that in the chat, but holy cow. Yeah, uh, let's see here. You know what vampire love more than blood knowledge? Yes, absolutely, right? Because that's gold. Yeah, patience has brought me to Florida. You couldn't be more right, Michael. Yes, absolutely. I love your avatar. Well, yeah, of course you gotta love it, man. Tammy, I looked up my family tree and found out I was the sap. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> oh my god, you guys are the best. Yeah, I mean it. It is. It's. It's. I. I just. It's a. It's a strange thing, you know. Like I was. I was so on the. Um, 
I met, I mean, the things that, like, if, if I thought about it as much as I know I'm going to anyway, so I don't know why I'm trying to avoid it, but there were just people I thought, oh, I hope I meet that person one day, or that person would be fun to know, that are now people I hang out with. Jericho is one of those people, for that matter. And, um, and I don't know what's going to come of all of this. I really don't. But I know that, um, I know that I don't, uh, I know that I just am, am on to something that I never saw, you know, as a possibility. Like, it is just, it's crazy stuff. Sorry if I'm rambling, guys, you know. Uh, if I'm not streaming, it's usually because I'm working myself into the ground and I'm, uh, my brain might be pudding, so. I decided, hey, if Kelsey's gonna stream, and I know Kelsey is like, you know, he's not the biggest fan of of uh <laughs> being out there doing this stuff i gotta i gotta stream too man i gotta do something because i can relate there you go and this is a fun i mean this is a fun little scene that all of the nosfero um origin stuff or i should say you know backstory stuff i guess is is fun to do but i mean i've just been um let me tell you some of the crazy shit i've been thinking about let's do that oh and let me see here hey sean um Oh, hold on a second. Yo, what's up, Odin? It's great to see you, Odin. Oh, damn, another <laughs> page. <laughs> yeah, that's right, guys. They're all there. They're all done. Meltdown14, it's great to see you. Hello. Leaving a like, as usual, watching the stream while I wait on my client. Excellent, Meltdown14. It's great to see you, my friend. Uh, let me see here. Um, and here you go. Ellie Munoz says, Hey, Shant, have you heard about the sci-fi vampire book Blindsight? I have not. Um, the Neil um, Blom, I can never pronounce his name, is making into a movie. I have not. That sounds like two great things that go great together. Uh, sounds really good. Maybe I gotta get glasses even stronger. Hold on a second. Um, maybe some high-end vampire stuff soon. Yes, I hope so. Absolutely. Look at all the love here. Look at all the love here. Yeah, vampires could use, um, part of the reason I'm doing this book, vampires could use a few more, uh, layers to their lore, I think. You know, and I don't mean in the sense of, um, just a little bit more richness and a little bit more depth in terms of certain aspects of them. Like, as much as I enjoy um, a lot of vampire stories, Dracula is still, to me, it's it's in a class by itself in terms of the, the lore that it builds up. And that's why combining vampires, mummies, and, um, uh, what do you call it, and uh, the Thulu mythos was such an excellent opportunity to me anyway to explore. But yeah, I can't wait to see that stuff. What's up, Odin? Yeah, lots of love for Odin, man. Odin is another person, by the way. Who I've been watching stream for ages. I mean, guys, I tell you what. I am i don't know if any of you guys are good at sleep. If you are good at sleep, stay good at sleep. Never lose that. It is a great skill. I do not have that skill. I'm working on it, but I don't have it. Um, here's the thing for me anyway. Is that um, there are so many times I see streams like, oh man, I got sent a link by um, 80s Made and I wanted to go on that show. He was doing an auction. And I was like, oh, I should go on that show. I gotta go. I thought, well, just to talk to 80s Maid and talk to, to all those cats. And I was so tired and I was at my desk and I'm like, I can't summon up the energy. I just can't move. Uh, I think I've been painting all morning and all day and I just was like, I can't, I can't move. But yeah, there's so much cool stuff going on. And uh, let me see here. There we go with that. There we go with that. I just want to show you guys all the pages right now. I just want to show you everything. It's like, oh, I should show them everything. Because I just, it's it's so frustrating not being able to share some of this stuff with you guys. Um, yeah, let me see here. Let me see what I've got. I'm not going to show you all the pages. You never know, though. I'm so tired, I might slip and show you guys pages. But, I mean, just st stacks of art. Stacks and stacks of art, guys, is what I have here. It is so insane. And it's physical. Like, not a single bit of these pages is virtual. It's all done, you know, in the physical realm. It's all stuff that you can hold. You can hold the original artwork on this book. That means if we're ever in a situation where we can actually do, like, a gallery-type thing like they do at certain conventions, you guys will be able to see the originals for these pages. So you're getting a reproduction of something that starts out in physical. And it's... Oh, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. So much stuff involved in this and this little guy right here whose name is zero tep i've been enjoying figuring him out for a while when i originally started him if you have seen this panel before he was such a different character he had such a different demeanor and uh he was a lot funnier he had kind of a goofy face 
And as this book has gone on, I've kind of realized that I need to get this guy to be, there's the focus, I need to get this guy to be a lot more um, serious, you know, like he's, he's a threat, like every character is much more intense and much tougher. And so little things like those pages of the book, that's been the fun stuff to do. Shanth Gallery would be sick. Yeah, I'm going to do that art book. It's going to happen. Um, I'm at my uh, at my most creative at midnight. I know what you mean. But my office day job starts at 730. You're totally right. Yes, indeed. Everybody's saying, hey, brother, to Odin. It's so great to see you here, buddy. It is so great to see you here. Hail General Piggy. I love seeing it. Uh, yeah, Shanth's Gallery would be sick. Shanth's Gallery would be sick. Yeah, at some point, guys, I've had my work in, in art shows and gallery shows before, but this is the thing I'm most proud of in my entire life as an artist. I, I When I did the first uh, two art books, I thought, I'm going to just be doing art books my whole life. I'll never go back to comics, you know, because it was such a, a heartbreaking, you know, experience. And I also knew that to tell a story that was worth somebody, you know, waiting for as long as it would take to do, like they do for my art books, um, that it was going to take, you know, it was going to take at least 30 pages, and I've never done 30 painted pages of comic. Never. Very few people ever will do 30 pages of painted comic books. It's very difficult. Um, you can count the amount of fully painted comic books in this country in particular on one hand. And sometimes stuff that looks painted, and a, a friend of mine, Laura Zuccheri, does her stuff fully painted, and she is just insane. Um, but uh, I showed her work to uh, Rini, uh, who was I liked the work, which is great to see, because I thought Rini would love Laura Zuccheri's stuff. Uh, shout out to Rini. I hope she's doing well. Um, but this is the thing. Um, there's not a lot of people who do it because it is, it's a very complicated process, but what you get from it is a work of art. So I've been on a major kick this week of watching over and over again one of Nosfero's uh, influences, which may seem a little bit odd, but is the um, the production design and the look of one of my my favorite superhero film, I think, which is Batman 1989. I don't know if any of you guys um, are fans of Batman 1989, but it was a massive, massive movie for me as a kid, and I love that movie. That's why I'm a digital man. Amen. Amen. Um, let's see here. Years ago, I rented space in an old building near the college. We uh, named it the Factory in Honor of Warhol. Brought together creatives from the arts, music, engineering, etc. to see what might happen. Oh, that is awesome. That is outstanding. It's 78 and I'm cold. <laughs> Tammy A. There you go. Hey, whack ass says Phil. Look at all you great people in the chat. It's so great to see you. Yeah, it is. It is. I and here's the crazy thing, guys. I do digital work because I make videos. I make you know, but I also make Photoshop and illustration pieces. And this piece will be done um, in, to some extent. This will be done in digital because I have to scan it in. I'm going to be working in InDesign. Um, and when I scan it in, I use an Epson um, scanning software that allows me to use my large format um, Epson uh, scanner. And, uh, and then I work into it and color correct it. And then, uh, you know, just anything I may even have, uh, hopefully if he's got the time or the energy, which, uh, I know it's a big ask with everything he's always got going on, but I'd love to have, uh, Bancroft take a look at it and, uh, check the, um, pre-press aspects of it. But I don't want to put that on him because he's a nice dude. He'll, he'll, uh, he's the kind of person you're almost afraid to ask to help you because, and it's weird. Cause I do realize people say this to me, say this about me. Because you're like, you'll know he'll try to find a way to do it. Um, and, uh, yeah, he's a good dude. But, um, but yeah, it's all going to go through a digital process at some point. It all is. But at this phase, for me, there's a tactile quality that I think um, is important for me to be getting in this stuff. All right, now I'm starting to see the values better on this page. But do you see what I mean, guys? Like, when, when I'm doing something like this and the lettering isn't even on it, I want to bring people into a world, man. That's what it's about. I know the feeling wanting to share everything just finished 88 pages and the ending pages are my favorites, but spoiler loaded. Understood, man. Understood. We got 31 people in here. My God, guys, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, please do. And thank you guys for sharing this stuff out on social media. I know none of that stuff happens without you guys. And um, I know some people think it's tacky to ask for likes and subscribes, but I'm not too proud to, I ain't too proud to beg, as the song once said. Um, and, uh, 
And every bit helps. Every bit helps. Oh, yeah, I know what I was going to do. So right there, one of the things that I felt like um, I needed to make sure I did was um, I've got this bat that's flying here. I love to paint these bats in there. I blame, you know, Todd McFarlane and, uh, gosh, Frank Miller and anybody who's ever drawn Batman um, for putting awesome bats in their stuff. But I wanted to put a little bit of a darker value around it so I could make the moon pop there in that composition and frame it a little bit better. And there we go. I had a funny realization this week that um, I'm my old job used to be near uh, Salem, Massachusetts. And I'm sure you guys know a little bit about Salem, Massachusetts if you've ever uh, studied any history. And my favorite YouTubers, um, at the moment anyway, the Grim Life Collective, were up there filming in Salem. And they were all places my family and I used to go to and visit. Um, or they were showing places, actually. A lot of them we hadn't been to that they showed. Um, but uh, but I was like, oh, man, makes me excited to see people out there doing it. Um, I got to, oh, yeah, I got to make friends with whoever is driving a Shelby GT350 in my neighborhood. Oh, my gosh. Hell, yeah. Um, I know the feeling. Wanting to share everything. Yes, indeed. Got that one. Awesome. Odin, it is uh, you going to put it on Indiegogo. There you go. Hail all. Hail Red Dress Press. How are you doing? It's great to have you here in the chat. Thank you so much. It is great to see you. Um, yeah, guys, you, this stuff is crazy, man. The way this channel has grown and the people that I have met who I can't imagine not having in my life is is cool. It's incredible. It, it really reminds me of what, um, what it used to be like to be a fan. You know, before the dark times, before politics. Ugh. I mean, if there's one thing I cannot stand, it's politics such a funny thing like to bring that into entertainment but anyway but it is great to hang out with people who just want to have a good time most of my good times this may shock people but most of my good times did not involve politics very weird thing um especially the inter-office politics which is got to be up there with some of the least favorite politics in the world uh thank you so much red dress press i appreciate that um hail sugar at red dress press there's lots of love here um Absolutely. I would love to go back to Salem, Massachusetts. Was there as a kid and didn't appreciate it. Well, you know what's so funny is when I was younger, and hail awesome one, it is great to see you, my friend. Gosh, you guys are making this uh, stream crazy, man. It's awesome. Thank you. Speaking of awesome one, um, I will tell you this. I went to the Vatican when I was a kid. It was a stop off on our way over to India. We stopped in Rome, and I saw the Sistine Chapel before it was uh, quote-unquote fixed. Uh, and, uh, I, I was too young. I was too young. I didn't really appreciate what I was seeing. I remember seeing it and all of that stuff, but I just think I would have experienced it differently. Plus there's something to be said. I know there's a lot of people who like to go on vacation, um, quote unquote vacation that are very, um, national lampoons vacation about it, where it's just about getting to see all the sites and you don't really stop, slow down and appreciate things. And that's something I really learned from my wife's uh, family and from my wife in general, which was how much more fun life is when instead of just trying to do every single thing, that you try to just enjoy the things that you do and not have it be uh, like a, a list you're checking off on everything. Because at the end of the day, you're going to have to make choices on what you do based on your taste. Simply Green, it is great to see you. Notre Dame, uh, Notre Dame uh, was an attack. Yeah, uh, was it? Really? I don't know. I didn't I didn't know that. Um, vacation with the uh, <laughs> Abershams. Yeah, there you go. Um, I hope it wasn't. Um, before the Dark Times, never watched YouTube. Mm, yeah, absolutely right. Or whatever their name is from Caddyshack. Gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah. Oh my gosh, one away from 30 likes on this stream? This is awesome. Yeah, kick the algorithm in the head. It's uh, being ridiculous. Oh man, yeah, that's another thing that will take the wind right out of you uh, as far as streaming goes is when um, algorithmic hijinks uh, begin to happen. And that is really tiring. Really tiring. Because you're just trying to push things and get your work out there. And you, the last thing you need, that's hard enough. But you don't need anybody putting their hand on the scale and making it more difficult than it already is. You know, I mean, I often say that that's one of the biggest things that um, that we run into in this space, which is, 
Um, people who are just kind of like, you know what, what you're doing looks really, really hard. What you're doing is really, really hard. I don't know if they see it's hard. I feel like I need to make it difficult with my presence. It's like, you don't. You really don't. It's hard enough. Rest assured, I'm not eating caviar. I'm not sipping wine, you know, by the uh, by the Thames. I'm working my butt off 14 hours a day and spreading the same amount of butter over more and more bread <laughs> when it comes to the money. And all so that I can give people something that is worth their while and worth their time. And that is huge. Yeah. That was my in-laws. Oh my god. You know then, Tammy. You know what I'm talking about. That is absolutely what it is. Let's I'm painting off frame again. Dang it. Um, but yes. It is, it is not the way to do things. It's like when people ask me if I've read a particular Comicsgate book that's come out. I read Comicsgate books um, when I have the time not as an assignment because I want to really enjoy them. And I have a sofa in the studio that I look at while I paint. Uh, I certainly don't sit in it enough as I should. Um, but this is the thing. I like to sit down every now and again and look at a book I haven't seen in a while. I like to do that kind of thing. I'd encourage all of you guys to do that, to just enjoy these streams. You know, it's um, listening while working on cash grab fulfillment. God bless you, man. At some point, I'm gonna. At some point in this process, Phil, I'm gonna try to get you to fulfill a Nosferro book before all all is done. <laughs> like it's gotta be at some point that's gonna happen, um, because it is just oh, it's crazy just doing it all. But that's awesome, Phil. Good job, man. Sistine Chapel set me off. Loss of call. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. But we can um, stick to some more upbeat. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Well, let me say this. Let me. How do I push these stupid buttons on here? I can't ever figure it out. Um, but let's say this. Um, here's why one of the things I think is really important and a positive topic, which is we have got to spend as much time as we can getting skill out there, having people see, you know, people working and sharing skill because the only way we're ever going to be able to build things like that again, or restore things or keep up to date things like that, you know, in terms of, um, preserving them is if people gain skill. And that's why I'm so thankful, you know, that we have the audience we have, because we got a lot of people with skills across a lot of different disciplines um, in this place. And that's what makes it great, you know. And, and I always think that um, whenever we lose a great talent, it's it's felt more keenly when their skill set has not been passed on. And whenever we lose a great work of art, it's the same thing. And so I want to make sure that I'm doing my bit to get the skill stuff out there. Because uh, it does help. It does help us to grow the next generation. Um, you know, just, I mean, thinking about Bob Ross and his influence on people. There's so many people who picked up a paintbrush or got inspired to be artists because of him. And I love that stuff, man. I love that stuff. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> just jumped again. Tim Tams. Hey, awesome one. You're painting um, for Nosferro, right? Yep, absolutely. Just detailing stuff up, man. Uh, thank God only took uh, three years cash grab. That's right. Worth the wait. Hello, Eric Weathers, my man. Eric, I know you didn't send a super chat. I can't resist. Hail Shanth, hail chat, says Teflon Ron. But Eric, this is for you. I love you, brother. Charge! My man. Eric Weathers, man. Such a good dude. Uh, if you are not following Eric Weathers, if you're not subscribed to his channel, for the love of God, please do. He is, he is one of, uh, how do I put this? in a way that's specific. Mm. He's one of the purest souls and has some of the most incredible integrity of anybody I see in CG. He is, you can always count on Eric Weathers to be just sort of somebody that you can run something by um, if you have a thought and you know what he gives you back is going to be something that he is very conscientious about. And um, that's why so many creators respect him as an artist. And uh, that's just how it is. Love Eric Weathers. Bob Ross, indeed. God bless him. The colors, man. This page. It's Guys, It's this whole book is, is going to be sick. You're going to love it. Um, let's see. My son. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Tammy A says, my son learned to play the drums at the age of five. My God, that's amazing. Um, he could listen to a song three times and then play it. He feels he needs to share his talent. There you go. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Yeah, that's the stuff. That's the stuff I live for, man. You know, it's like you, I love seeing people discover their talent. I love seeing people 
you know, discover their skill. And, um, and it's, it's cool. You know, like I was watching, uh, Kelsey on his channel and he was doing something for uh, battle brick road. And I was just thinking about how much I like those characters, man. I, I, I'm always been, I'm always been a lion guy in terms of things I want to see done because I like painting werewolves and monsters and detail and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm excited about that character. I think the most in, um, in battle brick road. Um, and really looking forward to that. I made my own custom Battle Brick Road hat because I'm a big fan. That's the way it is. Let's see here. Oh my god, my glasses just fell. Um, Eric has been washed three times over crystal diamonds to make pure water. You're absolutely right. It's very true. Um, I, I can't believe how popular um, he is now. I remember watching Bob Ross growing up. Yeah, me too. He's He is absolutely a giant. He's 32 now in, in a band. That's awesome. Still plays on his dad's set. That is beautiful, man. Yeah, absolutely. And and this is the thing about it too, I would say, is that um you know, when you're looking at when you're looking at talent, when you're looking at skill, when you're looking at the kind of stuff that that people do out there, that's that's the stuff that's really enriching to me. And I've been kind of geeking out on Batman 1989 and um and looking at the Anton first who we lost way too soon um, to um, his own hands, but I think because of a horrible side effect um, of this medication that was banned that he shouldn't... I mean, this is like one of those things that shouldn't have been uh, prescribed to him. But um, he did the concept design for the Batman 1989 movie. He is a legit genius. And uh, I love collecting stuff because that was a huge influence on Nosferu, that gothic action adventure hero terms. Hey, what's up, Hoseman? It's good to have you back. Yes, uh, internet detox is over. I feel better. Well, it's great to have you back, Hoseman Socrates. I hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, well done on the fast. Indeed, absolutely, man. That's brilliant. Commendable, man. But um, I have one right over here, actually, I'll grab. So in case you guys are wondering, one of the coolest Batman designs ever and uh, big influence on the the shape language of um, of Nosferu's uh, mask because I wanted to get that kind of um, first Batman movie deco kind of vibe to it. And uh, man, Anton First, what a legend! What an absolute legend! Love his stuff, man. Love his stuff. I mean, I can't I can't get over that stuff. Yeah, and, and it's great work. And channel member awesome one. And channel member hostman. I forgot to mention it. I gotta make sure I point that out more. Um, it's great to see you guys. Yeah, Tammy A, channel member again. Um, thank, I'm so glad to hear he's still playing drums on his dad's set. That makes me smile. That makes me smile as a dad. I love hearing that stuff. Because it is. I mean, it's it's a blast. I love seeing people... I love seeing people do really, really well. Um, and I love seeing... Um, I love seeing people develop their talent and grow. I mean, that was one of the things that attracted me to teaching. Is that... Um, it's a profession that's easy to keep someone like myself engaged in as long as it's um, the point of it, as long as that's the point that, that people are doing, trying to educate people in a particular skill. The second that there's this um, this kind of woke mission creep that comes in, I'm out of there It's because it's terrible. I mean, it's like I just want to talk to people about art. And when you start doing things where you make people um, or you teach students actively – that they can't trust um, people who have more experience and more knowledge and more skill than them because there's this inherent power dynamic in <laughs> the the critiquer and critique e. It's actually some crazy stuff that was being said. It's like going, yeah, there's an inherent knowledge differential between my doctor and me, and uh, that's a good thing. I don't need to be driving that car sometimes. I just need to be able to know what they're doing and give informed consent. But man, it was. Uh, it's crazy, but uh, yeah, I because I think passing on skill and also what's interesting to me about a lot of this stuff is a lot of it comes from inside of the person, you know, was the black yellow logo 89? Yes, it was. Or was it in the comics earlier? Oh, that's a good question. I think the black yellow was for the movie, if I'm not mistaken. Um, let's see here. Um while I was on a fast, did some figure sketching, nice, and cover sketching. I did a cover for uh, of Casino Royale from Penguin Books with the uh, Bond babe on it. Very cool. Um, the Batman figure is protecting uh, Boss Man and Jace Funko Pop with his duck call. You're absolutely right. 
Um, hey, Sean, did you know Universal Studios is opening a park in Las Vegas and Texas? Yes, I've heard about that. They're eating Disney's lunch, without a doubt. Teflon Ron, I love theme park design. Always have. Was a massive, massive fan of the man Walt Disney. And as a result, the people who were uh, carrying on his legacy. But now that legacy is is somewhere else. It's at Universal. And yeah, they are absolutely eating Disney's lunch. Because Disney decided to get into politics. Why would an entertainment company want to get into the least entertaining thing on this planet? It's crazy. Yeah, Mario, Barry, Disney, please. Yeah, I think that's happening right now. Yeah. The worst things to happen to Walt Disney are the C word that ends in answer. Um, and um, that was the second worst thing to happen to Walt Disney, the company. The loss of Walt Disney. Um, the worst thing now, I think, is Bob Iger. He is the worst thing to happen to that company since the C word. And he's just, he's destroying it. He's destroyed so many franchises and so many things at this point. I've lost count. One of the most incompetent uh, managers I've ever seen anywhere. And that will be his legacy. It'll be a matter of time before people start reporting it. It's taken them forever because, again, they're very, very slow to adopt something that breaks with the party line. But he's, he destroyed that company during his tenure. Absolutely has destroyed it. Michael Eisner, all the people who've who've tried to keep it going, whatever their faults may be, nobody comes close to what Iger's done. Just a disaster. He's been responsible for destroying, on his watch, Pixar, Disney feature animation, now it's the Disney theme parks, and Star Wars. I mean, good lord. I mean, it's essentially, it's been an assault on American culture. It's crazy. Can't stand it. Yeah, I, oh yeah, I, I love DeSantis is calling him, yeah, absolutely, he should. They're going to get in... The, they're, they're in so much trouble right now. I find politics amusing, but for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, I find it like, you know, watching a fight or something in boxing. Uh, there are things worse than death. Some of them happen to Walt. Yes, indeed. You are you ain't kidding. Yeah. Just watch the out-of-touch Bud Light VP and <laughs> Todd Woke is investment gold. I know, they're crazy. Um, I'm sure Mr. Disney is, yes, rolling in his... Uh, Rolling in his um, fridge as what I grew on the skin. Yeah, company, you're absolutely right. Um, let me see here. Uh, they're, they have the Mario Brothers stuff, and I believe they're working, um, breaking Pokemon onto parks. If they do that, it's over for them. Weird Beatnik, hi. Hi, Weird Beatnik. It is good to see you, Weird Beatnik. Um, yeah, I mean, Mario, shocker, is huge. But you've got to... This is the thing. The... Focus is such a key to any creative or entertainment endeavor. There's a certain amount of ignoring what's going on in the world you have to do. And I'm not talking about what they're doing, which is ignoring reality. But things like politics, things like the news, don't create timeless stories. And at a certain point, people thought the key to making stories timeless was, um, was to anchor them in whatever was the political trend at the moment but look at stuff that's built around political trends that stuff never lasts except for by accident those things tend to um you know define the time they're in great works of entertainment like jaws but the subtext is is oftentimes really only applied or even cared about later if the initial entertainment was solid and that's what it comes down to you know what i mean like this right here what i'm doing right here this is all about aesthetics. The texture of the stone, the way the cape falls, all of this stuff is aesthetic. It is not political. It is skill-based. That is what we're doing. And the second people forget what line of work they're in, which is the entertainment business, now, not great things happen, shall we say. And I'm doing things that, that in this book that people are, you know, people are trusting me to be able to do and you know trusting me to say hey Shaf, don't get distracted by all that noise just make a great work of art so that when we get this book we smile and we flip through it deal that is the deal and when people went to the disney parks or when people go into the movie theater they're doing that to escape the world outside not to have the world outside come in there because you can get the world outside for free you know you can get the world outside for free There we go. And you really cannot sell it inside. That's another crazy aspect of it that they're missing.
There we go. But yeah, increasingly people are getting on the bandwagon in uh, some good ways and probably some future obnoxious ways. And um, figuring out that this uh, whole thing is... It, people are done with it. People are absolutely done with it. And uh, it's a weird thing to watch. I'm sure everybody who is psycho into it is going to act like they weren't. But that's the next phase. When I was teaching uh, at the college I was teaching at, um, it was in... Uh, it was in a very dicey financial place. And I came in there and I was the optimist. Like, of course, Can you imagine? Uh, I was the optimist and I said, no, 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 we can do this. We can do this. And they were trying to at some point sell the college to a state college. And I thought it was a terrible idea because I knew the state college was not exactly a reputable place. I thought they were going to just try to sell the, buy the buildings and fire everybody. And there was a lot of people who were so naive about that. But when they... Um, when that deal fell through and everybody was wringing their hands, I said, you know, everybody is worried about this place going out of business because or running into walls because of um, because of, of things that are not going to be the problem. I said, and boy, was I prophetic with this. I said, um, what's going to destroy this college is when it gets to a certain level of success. And we did. We got onto financially stable ground and hipster posers roll in. And decide to have an impact on it. We got a hipster poser president in uh, our college. And a bunch of hipster poser hires. And they run that place into the freaking ground financially. Because those people do not understand how business works. They're good at coming into places once they're already successful. You'll see this, in, I'm sure, in Comicsgate, in the Iron Age, in every group you're going to see this kind of stuff. It's nothing to stress about. Nothing to get sucked into. But yeah, the people who rolled up into Disney didn't give a damn about it and uh they drove it into the ground that's all that happens and that happens everywhere you just got to be ready for it i watch for it too that's why i've got my own thing going that's why all of us do shanth and optimist no would never have guessed it yeah i think they tend to work better when they aren't tied to a specific political system or ideology okay let me go back yes yeah, stories wise um it takes a lot of work though oh here it is random mcgranderson um, I'm of the opinion that if Disney wants to continue setting their IPs on fire, yep, let them. Star Wars is dead. Marvel is dead. Anything that Disney owns is dead. Just let them burn and move on. I'm the same way. Um, you can uh, make works of art that are political. 1984, Atlas Shrugged, um, X-Men, uh, God Loves Man Kills. Yes, I would argue that um, I think of... I don't have a problem with any of those like in terms of it, but the one great work there for sure is Atlas Shrugged, and I would argue it's ideological, not political. Um and same thing goes with this. I think there are political pieces that stand the test of time. Demolition Man, yes. But Demolition Man, this is the cool thing about Demolition Man. Demolition Man didn't work for its time period um, in terms of when it came out. There wasn't a huge audience for it. But because its ph philosophical undertones didn't fit with what people want, the ideology of the time. But now it's seeing as prophetic because it's built on an ideology. To me, those are ideological, free speech and all of those things. I think Comics Gate is cool. I wish there was a music gate. Um, I think everything needs a gate. <laughs> yes, and I always say this. Start it, man. That's the key. Start it up. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Sean Jetty Art. Wow, I was just scrolling through my feed, and the drinker had Russell Crowe on his VIP lounge. Our boys made it to the big leagues. Holy cow. Wow. It's happening, guys. It is happening. People are becoming less and less afraid to be around sane people. And those of us who... Um, we were, I was talking about Malin as the first guy over the wall. Part deux, indeed. Um, yeah, Star Wars is dead to me. I can't be outraged or bothered. I can't either that they do anymore. I'm working on my own space opera and love being... Um, uh, space opera and love being in that world. Yes, gotcha. Yeah. Um, you're, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's... it's um, you can't yeah it can't be done it can't be done you know you can't play to um one particular ideology you're so right disney imagineers were gone after walt was and here's what's funny there were some great imagineers still working there that got laid off and i know a lot of people i'm sure went to universal universal people had such a built up love for disney and continuing that legacy that Iger and all of those people who came in had to work really hard to alienate them like, they were willing to put up with a lot of stuff. And Universal, I'm sure, was making constant overtures to them. Constant. So they really had to burn that bridge. They really had to burn that bridge. I always tell people that um, academia should take a bow. 
um, because my love of teaching was something that was always there that I didn't realize. And becoming a teacher, going through all of the crap I had to do, getting that master's degree and all that other shit, um, took a tremendous amount of work. And for me to get to that point and have them kill my love of teaching, well done. They they did a great one. Yeah, Beer Gate just started last week. That's right. White Boy Summer's coming again. John Malin. Um, it's an inclusive White Boy Summer, by the way. Damn good interview that. I don't I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. Become the thing. Amen. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh people can make music today on their computer without a studio and release it to on all the major Yeah, look at Tom McDonald. Um, platforms in a day. I'm not sure they need a gate because there's no gatekeepers. Possibly true. Yeah, it's true. It's but it, I will say this: the great thing about Comics Gate and Iron Age and all that stuff is it just gives you. Um, it helps. It's a shorthand for people understanding that you're independent and where you sit. Because there is no doubt. I as I worked and I built up my audience on Instagram and launched those first two art books. Um, it's a night and day difference between what goes on being in Comics Gate. Because being by yourself on all of this stuff um, is exhausting. It's done, you know, but even when I think about some of the really independent folks like um, Eric July is a really good example because he's not a part of anything in particular. He just has a lot of people. He has friends in CG. He has employees in CG. Um, and, uh, and he has friends on, you know, the Fandom Menace or whatever it is, the Friday Night Tights group and, and everything like that. But when you have groups that you can go to of people who are free thinkers and who you don't have to explain and that you can disagree with, you know, in terms of, you know, whether people like, I don't know, season two of Picard or something. I don't know. I'm just trying to think of something. Um, or, oh, I didn't really like the Mario movie that much, but you're all united in the fact that the conversations are about quality. This is the big mistake that fans, um, uh, you know, new school fans make. We always had disagreements, Marvel or DC, Spider-Man or, you know, Punisher or the Hulk or Daredevil or... We always had those conversations, guys. It was always the case. They just weren't... We didn't bring politics into it because that's boring, you know? Uh, Michael Deach says, Talented creators can work political themes into their art. What we have today are... Ha You've got it, ham-fisted Philistines making blunt propaganda for dummies. Yes. Fail. You're absolutely right. I mean, shoot, Reagan is in The Dark Knight Returns. Gotta say does make it a little bit dated um but i mean not really it, it's for me i mean i'm always going to be tied to that but when they were making batman returns with ant or batman returns batman in 1989 they actually made it a fusion of 80s and sort of 30s so it was timeless everybody had fedoras and things on and it has made that movie timeless now some of the ideas and themes of it come get your free money and i'm gonna poison you all which was uh the joker um that stuff is it's there thematically it's great stuff, man, but it's it's not hitting you over the head. You're right. I love all the old Star Wars stuff. I hate what Disney has done. You're right. Same here. Before the sale is pretty much how I roll. Thrawn and all of that stuff, so I decided to make my own based mainly on Knights of the Old Republic um, with a healthy dose of Mass Effect. There you go. Yeah, don't say based on Kodor. Say inspired by. There you go. Um, uh, Random McRanderson, yes, inspired by. Gotcha, gotcha. I hate to bring up politics, but I was doing some midnight searching, and I saw it basically people trying to stay up uh, to stay up. Oh, start up. Baddie boop was racist. Um, and I'm like, how? Yeah, th th they're grasping at straws now. Uh, don't worry. Betty boop's going to be fine. She'll survive it. She survived a lot to get here, uh, to this point in pop culture. My nephew and niece did some SoundCloud music. Very cool releases. Lo-fi hip hop didn't go anywhere, but releasing music is very easy now. Indeed. Been tagging Iron Age Me Too in Twitter. It just sounds badass. I, I tag it with Comics Gate all the time. Tom McDonald, John Rich, and uh, NF are great independent singers who speak their values. I normally despise hip-hop, but Tom and NF are really smart. There you go. Yeah. Guys, it's the tunes. It's the tunes. It's not the style. It's the structure. Knowing how to paint is what I trade on. It's, it's what this stuff is that I do. If I don't know how to paint, it doesn't work. That's why I like when Eric July says uh, to people out in the crowd, he's like, uh, beat on that skill. Do it. Do it. Get your skills to the level they need to be. Nobody would have backed No Sparrow if I wasn't able to paint like I'm able to paint. And if I wasn't able to, to stream and talk like I've been able to, which is not even the best in the game. But I started with nothing, knowing nobody in this space. 
and uh, you know, not having met anybody professionally before I came in here. And you guys are here because of that work, and we've gotten to know each other. Like, I mean, I'm in the stream right now, and I'm like going, where's Stephen Rockwood? Is he okay? I hope he's all right. Is everything all right in Canada? Like, that's just how it is. Shout out, Stephen Rockwood. Even when you're not here, I notice you. Um, but it's it's a funny thing. You know, you just, we're working hard, and we just can't get distracted. We have to keep it up. We have to keep it up. Eric July is paid by the Blaze. He's affiliated with major conservative media. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, but even that is crazy considering. Um, let me see here. Yes. Uh, tag a... Oh, tag a shower pick to each post, Phil. That's getting kind of dark in here. Major mainstream establishment media even. Yeah, I guess what I mean to say is he he owns the stuff that he does, you know? And, and that's... Or how do I put it? That people... Because everybody's affiliated with something, right? I mean... Shoot, there's people who get royalty checks from the the you know the the comic company still, and they built that on their own work. I guess the thing is, is that I don't get the sense from Eric or Ethan or any of these guys. Maybe I'm an idiot, you know, in that sense. But I just I don't get that. The <laughs> it may be more than than maybe, but I never get the sense that they well obviously uh, that they speak uh, because of that check. If that makes sense, they say what they say because of that check, because. Um, that, I think that's something that people notice, you know? Uh, Sean the Jetty Art, Picard Season 3 is the new one. Oh, that's right. Season 2 was super woke, too. Yes, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Um, Gotham didn't exist. It was a character. You're right. Oh, Batman 1989. Uh, Eric Weathers saying, hey, Zade Comics. And hey again to Eric Weathers, of course. What? Betty Boop, Rome is burning. <laughs> hey, Eric, shipping more cash grab today. There you go. I haven't seen much buzz around Iron Age. I think it's a tag that never took off. It doesn't sound like anything what they intended it to mean. Um, it isn't catchy. Interesting. Um, Max Fleischer Studios did a great animation. They did Betty Boop and Popeye and uh, Gulliver's Travels. Yeah, that Superman stuff is beautiful. Zade Comics, how much is left? <laughs> Phil's like going to fall over on a table. Here's what I would say about Iron Age, right? Here's what I'd say about Iron Age. Um, as far as I love the expression, but this speaks to, um, this speaks to Comicsgate. And this speaks to um, Ethan, right? Um, when Ethan took Comics Gate from being a very nebulous thing, and John Malin and all those guys too, but the fact that they all got together and used it consciously, and so many other people used it, um, built it into what it is today. But it took a tremendous amount of work. You know, Comics Gate Live. Um, you know, which was a show branded on Comicsgate was something that that word would not have the value it has today if it wasn't for all of that branding. And I, I remember, I should know, I've done some intro work and a lot of stuff, the Comicsgate Kings intro, um, to help make that, you know, become, you know, to, to shore it up, so to speak. But there hasn't been anybody who has had the charisma or, and the energy to really build Iron Age as a brand that other people... Um, or as I should say, a name recognition that other people could use to generate success. And that takes work, you know, and it doesn't mean that, oh, it's like if somebody takes Iron Age and, and trademarks it and builds that thing up, that it's going to work. No, it, it's hard to do. I mean, um, Razor Fist kind of, you know, coined that phrase. But it's, um, you know, if and if if Razor Fist had a show called Iron Age <laughs> Live or something like that, I'm just trying to think of an absurd absurd situation i have th i don't think he has any interest in doing that um but uh but yeah i mean it, that's that's what it takes you know and shoot i mean i even did some iron age branding for a while on this channel and i mean i'm not afraid to use that i might use it again but it's like um i just sort of feel like it's it's um i don't know it's kind of razor fist thing but who's to say i mean i think anybody can use it if they want to use it just like comics gate you know well for the most part i mean i think um obviously ethan owns a trademark for that so if uh Somebody, you know, you have to go to him and talk to him if you're going to use it um, because of, you know, the craziness that went on with people trying to copyright and trademark it. Uh, Anvil Magazine is trying. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. See you, Timmy. Timmy heading out. Timmy, my brother, take care, my friend, and God bless you. Later, guys. I got to run off to work. Great stream once again, Sean. Thank you, Timmy Mello, for being a channel member and an awesome dude. I, I appreciate you so much. Sean, and happy Easter to everyone. Hail CG and the Iron Age. Amen. Long live the Iron Age. Yeah, I, I'm going to use it because I love it. Um, Jonathan Jetty Art, Uncle E is the Gandalf to our, yes, absolutely, to Thor from the scene um, in Return of the King. Absolutely. 
Um, I backed Anvil Magazine, and I think it got funded within the first week. Very, very cool. Yeah, hail chat. Hail Neff, how you doing, my friend? Nefarious in the house and channel number. Thank you so much for being here, my friend. It is great to see you in the house. Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I can't overstate, I mean, having... Have, going back with Ethan in terms of to the fandom menace phase of um, that channel uh, and the uh, the high council stuff I I mean watching I remember when he did the stream where he said I am you know people keep calling me the leader of comics gate when SJWs were referring to him as that online and he said I'm gonna own it yeah I am I am comics gate I'm the leader if you want to say that I'll say it and uh, it was it didn't come without its 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 risk certainly. It was fraught with risk for him. Um, but he didn't fear it ever. He was like, no, these are the people I want to be around. And I think that's where the respect comes. Iron Age is a little bit different because um, it's something that has been made by one group as opposed to put on them, like Gamergate or Comicsgate or all of that crazy stuff. So there's an element of that that is essential and worth... I, I just like that so much more now with that smoke. That's working way better. Um Shanth, uh, to me, Mello, that will be 75% profit to me, Shanth. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Shanth, trademark. I got you. Sorry, they said they were saying to me, Mello, Shanth, trademark. That'll be 75% of profit to me. Yeah, that's what they tried to do with it. It's nuts. And he had to fight that, that case in court to get that sorted out so that, you know, people wouldn't be able to use it for, for stupid reasons. And, and I think that's, it's crazy, the stuff that he's been through. But I think that if somebody wants to put in the sweat to build up Iron Age and really put in the sweat, because it's not just that. I mean, Ethan, I know I say this, it's like, God, I feel like I'm becoming a broken record, but um, but Ethan created the Green Lantern emotional spectrum. He had a huge career, and he had a likewise as a result of him coming into this space um, and, and uh, you know, joining your boy Zach and John Malin and all the folks um, who were, actually, I guess those were the only people really publishing, quote, comic skate books. Um he added some credibility to it um, in that sense. And so did John and all of those folks when John agreed to be the first man over the wall as far as with an industry career. And again, I don't, you know, I'm kind of rambly right now, so this isn't exactly scientific what I'm doing right now in terms of the things I'm saying. Um, but um, but that's, you know, I just why I have so much respect for John and Ethan and those guys. But they took a lot of risk. And it's like, you think about that, the someone like Razor Fist who has a huge audience when he starts putting out his comic, if he starts, you know, saying this is an Iron Age comic book, blah, 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 it's, it'll have impact, you know. Whether it becomes a, an actual movement will depend on whether or not that's, you know, where the person who creates the term um, leads it, you know, or the person who is the central figure in it, where they lead it. I mean, the fandom menace, think about that. There were mainstream journalism, uh, journalism outlets using that term. That was because a lot of people were worked hard, built a huge audience, and people heard about it. They're probably a little bit less likely to want to use that stuff now because they can see what they created. Comics Gate 2. Every time they come at a group by name, they just popularize the name of the group. Let me get back to the chat here, guys. Um, let me see here. Well, let me see here. Um, the Iron Age thing is growing on me. Uh, the more I check out the website and the more I dig what they're doing, they just need more comic books. That's true. So let's help them out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Gamergate died after Anita Sarkeesian lost relevance. Yeah, they couldn't keep themselves alive because they never created, and that's what it comes down to. Yeah. EVS created Comicsgate and invited people to take part. Iron Age is a concept tries to lay claim to the work of a lot of indie creators as an accident of its circumstances. I think I know what you're saying there, but I'm going to be honest with you, Random McRanderson. My reading comprehension right now, as I'm sure you can tell, is slipping. But hopefully I read that correctly. <laughs> said, read what was written there because my brain is starting to spin. Um, yeah, mainly the rain falls in Spain. Yes, that's true. Mainly the rain does fall in Spain. You, you're killing me, awesome one. The emotional spectrum was the best part of the Green Lantern. Yep, and ingenious. Um, how um, had no one thought of that before? Yeah, there wasn't an Ethan Van Skyver. Everything seems that way. Well, Ethan made the comics gate big, at least. I know what you're saying. Uh, there were YouTubers around complaining about comics beforehand. And I think, by the way, let's tie both of those points together because I think they're two great points you guys have made, which is it's the creating thing. You have to create. It is very... Guys, it is so easy. Well, let's not say that because YouTubing is not easy. For people who are successful at it and put out 500 videos a day, God bless you. It is incredibly difficult to do um, consistently and do all of that stuff. But... The strength of this space, um, leaving comments 
on you know videos or leaving comments frankly anywhere is when they build something up are great but criticizing things is not the same thing as supporting things and that's why comics gate is relevant and why it's been so successful because we can make comics it's hard to make a movie it's not impossible my friend michael um over the choice voice who is not a part of any particular movement he's he's his own thing i mean he's been making star trek fan films for decades now um but he's a director and he makes movies and things like that video games are complicated to do comics gate works because in a lot of ways comics are incredibly difficult because you have to create your own idea you have to paint you know paint or draw or color or hire people it is a massive thing to do guys i will never undersell how much work i put into this thing and how much work it takes to make nosfero never i am very proud of the work and i won't be uh yeah i won't be told that i'm not working on it hard and that i'm not delivering what i promise that shit is certain um yeah shop that shit someplace else because i'm not having it man not fucking at all sorry to get off on a tear there but it's uh it does piss me off because it's like anything people want to say like, whatever they can say it but when people say i'm not serious and i don't deliver i've delivered two books on indiegogo i get my shit done that having been said we produce and it takes a lot to produce that's why you need crowdfunding some people can treat um and I, again this is not a, a sideways comment it's a legit thing some people can um have the financial resources to not really have to crowdfund they can kind of treat it like a pre-sale but also they're sort of crowdfunding for someone like myself coming into this space without you guys it's not possible i need the crowdfunding i need the financial support i need the super chats i need the channel memberships all of that stuff is making this stuff possible they're making it let's put it this way they're making it hurt less to take this risk and i thank god for you guys and i am so appreciative Jonathan jr now if you'll excuse me i need to wash my hands after typing the name. yes please do wash your hands um don't i know it uh hostman but i think his um he's here is hard is in the right place i think is what it was um nefarious we're all allowed a few bad takes there you go uh where is it um holy crap anvil magazine is 487 percent funded there you go um i'm thinking bancroft had a non-cg guy on his panel and they had great banter trying to reach each other's audiences there you go very cool yeah we were talking about that the other day um razor is wrong on lincoln among other things there you go well, uh, Ethan, at least, uh, well, Ethan made comments, but yeah, okay, good. I'm just making sure I'm caught. Oh my God. That was, you guys are, are unbelievable. Hostman with a $5 super chat. Unreal cinema is making uh, Knights of the old Republic fan films in the unreal gaming. I love that engine, by the way, it's so complicated, but it's brilliant to watch. Um, gaming engine. They are excellent. Check them out. Thank you for the super chat. Let me send a cheerleader your way. And thank you for supporting the channel. Hostman much love. <laughs> I wonder how many CG books are out there to date. I would say, um, I gotta be honest with you, Teflon. I feel like most of the CG books out there are married. So I don't know if they're dating. Uh, but there's, there's, <laughs> that's a sign of the exhaustion apocalypse. My old man humor knows no bounds. Um, but I just got a big stack of my wrecked planet books and I've got a short box over there. That's almost full of comic skate books. So there's a ton and sorry for the bad jokes. I can't help myself. Um, new, new sketch cards going up in three minutes on the lost pages three. There you go. Check it out guys. Crimstone by Zay. Check out that link. It's in the description as well. Oh my gosh. A super chat right there from Teflon Ron. Speaking of super chats, you legend. Here you go. My friend. <laughs> absolutely oh my gosh i love this one tammy i don't know if i'm gonna make it till 4 p.m jericho green time you gotta go do jericho green i did the intro for jericho that's another thing yeah when you guys see those videos i do for ethan all that stuff and the stuff i do for jericho green and and even the stuff i do for double impact although gabe does a ton of that stuff it's all with love man i want people to be successful that's why i play trailers i want people who work hard who are friends of mine to get what they need to get um in terms of support that's why i love talking to guys like phil man and thank you for the super chat you legend Teflon Ron. I love it. Um, I'm going to play that again. You guys are making it. Charge! 
podcast and check out my brother Jericho Green. Jericho Green has become a, a really good friend. Um, we we chat a lot. We send texts back and forth all the time, and I made an intro for him as a token of my love for uh, the work he does, but also because he's just been so supportive of No Sparrow, man. He's been a real supporter, and I love it. Um, Jordan Horse, it's great to see you, Jordan. How are you doing? Off topic, but I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad Narnar hype Rini Phil. Oh, Narwhal, yes. I'm glad Narwhal, um, Hype, Reeny, Phil, etc. are all doing the stream rotation. I Oh, shoot. Hang on. I lost it. Sorry. Um, I think it grows the entire community. Yes. Very good idea. Very good idea. Um, we are buying dirt for a raised garden. There you go. Very nice. Teflon Ron in the hundreds. There you go. Shanth and Jetty Art. Um, but I'm done. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hey, that really sucked. It did. It did. You think? <laughs> that was with Socrates. Those are awesome. Ha <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Got to do it. Um, up now, go get them. That's absolutely right. Yeah, you got to go get those cards. They're beautiful. My lovely cheerleaders. They love you guys. Thanks, Jordan. There needs to be a male cheerleader. No, wait. Hey, listen, we've got that on Double Impact. We've got Van Tam shaking his booty. Thanks to Minnie. Shout out to Minnie. L-Type, great, great work there. We love having you there. Um, I have at least 66 back to date, but haven't even scratched the surface. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've got a lot of stuff. I've got... Right now, um, Lost Pages is one of my favorites to read. The Lucent, of course, by Michael is great. Um, that's why I've been playing that that trailer for that campaign nonstop for maybe a year now, it feels like. I can't remember. That's really what it's about. That's really what it's about. Making that stuff happen. I, I just like seeing... I mean, Narwhal's my nose fair, bro. I love seeing him have success. I just... It's great. It's great to see people doing well and being positive because it really is. Life is too... We talk, I, got, I hate that I always get to this, this subject, but it's so true. Life is too short, man, to, to spend it being miserable and spend it letting people make you miserable. People who, who are there to do that, just get them out of your life. It's not worth it. And hail Jordan Horst. It's great to see you in the chat, brother. Uh, let's see. No awesome one. That was not awesome. There you go. Um, and some Dylan... Bu no not happening no what is what is wrong with this universe this is a very weird timeline we're in guys this is a very weird timeline i i, I just i i'm i'm at a loss it, but it is for us i guess you could say it's good um because people who want this kind of entertainment um can only find it here it's great for universal i know that but yeah it is a very weird thing. It is a very weird thing. That's all I can say. There we go. We're getting this vampire sorted. All right, guys. So we are at about, uh, we're almost two hours. It's 3.33. Wow, that's my favorite number in the whole world. I love seeing that. But uh, it is, uh, we're at 3.33, guys. And Jericho is going to be streaming in less than a half an hour. So if you haven't checked out Jericho Green yet and you think you might be interested, please do check it out. Um, he's one of my Double Impact brothers. I drink Modelo, God bless ya, and Micro Brews, I have beer now, so screw Bush. There you go. Um, let's see here. The Lucent looks awesome. The Steins ended a couple of days ago on Indiegogo, but still up on Fund My Comic. Um, if it gets to 10000 the book will be fully colored. Excellent, excellent. 100% um, shot. the reason I'm in Florida. Got rid of all the negativity. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. Bless y'all. Absolutely, guys. Thank you so much. Dylan Mulvaney, misogynist extraordinaire. There you go. Thank you guys for the cheers. I do appreciate it. Yes, indeed. Check out Locals right there for Jericho Green goodness. Guys, head on over there if you have not um, ever checked out Jericho Green. He just cracks me up, man. He does amazing stuff. And I did the intro on his show. So continuing my legacy of uh, of uh, donating time to, to do intros for people and, and help them grow their channels is a big part of what I do. Um, in addition to this, all this crazy stuff on my channel. So thank you guys for being here. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you, channel members. I am going to be playing um, the credits with all of your names in there. Yeah, Jericho makes me laugh so hard I die every single Double Impact stream. So know that. It's going to happen. But I'm going to play the credits here for you guys. Thank you for being here. I hope everybody had a wonderful Easter, Passover, whatever you celebrate. I hope it has been good. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. Uh, thank you guys so much. Enjoy spring as it starts to spring. Um, and, uh, as I always say, peace, because that is the meaning of my name. And also, also guys, stay gold, you beautiful people. Take care.